God is blessing us and we got so many wonderful people just like you. And there's more to come. Somebody said, where are you going to put them? We'll put them on a nail or something or put you on a nail and let them have the seat. But anyway, we're so glad to see you. And then this morning, my goodness, Dr. Mike Francine, evangelist, missionary, Mike Francine. Stand up, Mike. Stand up, Mike. That man has won more souls to Jesus than... Anybody I know now, I know T.L. Osborne was his mentor, and T.L.'s gone on home to be with the Lord, but, but my friend's seen, been all over the world and down in Central America. How many buses did y'all bring, having people bring in? 3,722. Say that again. 3,722. 3,722. Uh, thank you. 3,722 buses bringing people to the crusade. Could you imagine? And, and you in America don't know how people in countries like that ride buses. <laughs> it's not like 50 people get in a, a, a bus with 50 seats. It's like 200 people get in a bus with 50 seats. I'm serious. I mean, you know, they don't... You know, you, you go to third world countries and they're standing, they're packed in and they're standing in the doorway, they're standing in the exit and, and they can, they're holding on because, you know, they just need a place to, to ride. So anyway, Mike has been all over the world and we're just so grateful, Mike, that you're here. You've been all over the world recently. I hadn't seen you in a while. It's good to see you this morning. Give Mike Francine, the great missionary preacher of angels. Thank you, Mike. And then there, of course, is another great pastor and his lovely wife. My goodness, I'm so honored this morning with uh, Pastor Al and Linda Rowan. Hold up your hands over there, beautiful people. I knew Al. We, we met when we were 17 years of age. And, uh, and he was mentioning the other night how he knew me before he knew his wife, Linda. Well, I knew him before I knew my wife, Sharon. And uh, I won't go into our story, but uh, anyway, it's so good to have them here, pastor of a great church. And he's been, he was so kind to let me come and preach for him. I mean, I, I mean, he just said, yeah, Don, you can come on and preach. And I'm thinking, well, you don't know what you're doing, boy, when you let me come. But he was so kind to let me come and preach for him. And now they live here in Dallas. And, and he's going to be preaching for us here on April the 22nd. So uh, I'm telling you one thing. Y'all get ready for the ball to be knocked out of the park. No, no, no balls. No strikes. It's only knocking it out of the park and it's only home runs. Are y'all ready for that? Anyway, God is good and we're just grateful for all of you that has joined us by internet. You know, it's really something besides church we have and all of this and you're such a wonderful people, but our internet audience is just up into the thousands and thousands, so we don't have to have the big building and all of that expense, but we got wonderful people watching in the Philippines, Australia, New Zealand, and Africa, uh, in Eastern Europe, all over over the world people are watching and so we're just grateful that they're a part of the service today. Can you say amen? amen. And I want to take just a minute. Could I have that uh, microphone? TJ, I want you to come up here just a moment. Uh, this is our grandson TJ and about two weeks ago <clears throat> we were over at apartment complex. You just hold this one, son. Um, you, might get need to get, you might need to get used to this. <laughs> He's got a point. He's got a point. Okay. So, so start learning now to hold it up to your mouth. <laughs> it's on? Okay, it's on. Cool. Uh, TJ, we were, it was two weeks ago yesterday, I think, or a week ago yesterday. Yeah, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago yesterday, we went to a part, apartment complex, and there were, oh, I don't know, 25 kids there, and, and, uh, and it, it was a warm day, but the pool was very cool. I'm sure I didn't get in, but TJ got baptized in water. 
And all of those kids were just there, I mean, shouting, clapping, praising, worshiping God. And recently I went to one of the places where they do Bible study in the college where he attends. And there was over 400 kids there. It's over 400 kids there in that Bible study. Nice people leading the Bible study and the praise and worship. They only had a guitar and a keyboard. And, uh, you know, all those kids was just worshiping God and just glorifying God, magnifying God. And we were just so blessed to be there and we're thankful. TJ, what's going on? All right, so let me tell you what's going on. Um, I was in an extremely dark place. Um, and every decision I made uh, dug me deeper and deeper into that place. Um, and this was the entirety of like 2017. Um, and I just felt like I was beyond saving and I just was like severely depressed and like I really didn't want to live anymore. And because like my life really had no meaning without God um, because I didn't have God at the time because I just didn't really want anything to do with him, but he found me in the weirdest way possible. Um, you know us millennials and social media. Um, <laughs> so um, somebody liked my photo, and then I just decided to strike up a conversation with them um, because I went to high school with this person. Um, and then we were just like talking, getting to know each other, and then all of a sudden she asked me what my goals and aspirations in life were. And then I said, well, I don't really have any other than a family. Um, she said, it's not a bad goal to have. Um, and then she told me her like list of like nine different things, and these were like huge goals, like huge, huge, huge. And like the very first one was she wanted to follow the plan that God has for her. Um, and that kind of spoke to me, because I'm like, wow, it, like she really seems like she has her life together. She seems like she's happy and where she's, she wants to be. And I was just like, I want that. And so like out of nowhere, completely unprompted, I opened up to her. And then the first thing that she told me was God still loves me and that he wants to find me again. And so um, the very next day, uh, I actually went to my grandparents' house late at night because I just got off work. And, and then I basically told them I don't want to be in this dark spot anymore. And then they asked me what prompted this change. And then I said, well, actually, this person like kind of helped me with it. And then, yeah, and then, um, yeah, a long time. And then, uh, <laughs> and then. <laughs> And it was in that moment that um, my grandfather says, hallelujah, um, my prayers have been answered. And I said, well, what do you mean? And he's just like, well, son, we've kind of known that you've been in a dark spot for a while. And uh, ever since then, we've been praying for somebody to walk into your life to open no your eyes to God. Kind of knew. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but yeah, so they really knew um, that I was in a dark spot. And he said, ever since then, um, he's been praying, or they have been praying for God, uh, somebody to walk into my life to open my eyes to God. That's exactly what happened. And these past three months have been amazing, life-changing, and God has been using me in so many different ways. Um, he brought me this wonderful community called Focus, uh, Fellowship of Christian University Students, which is um, at the uh, college that I attend to, and it's just a wonderful community full of genuine people who just want to see God, want to better themselves, and it's just so amazing. And people have told me, like, already, like, in this short amount of time that they've known me, how I, I've helped them in their walk with God, how I've impacted them, how I'm such an inspiration, and um, it just keeps me going, keeps my fire lit, and... Um, it makes me want to just look more and more like Jesus, you know, like love people the way that he loves us and just be more Christ-like in everything that I do and bring meaning to my life, essentially. And uh, looking at my grandfather and my uncle, Tim, it's like really like inspiring to see how like on fire for God that they are. And I am too, but I mean like to get to their level, I got a ways to go. Um, <laughs> and I'm not that old yet, so uh, uh, I just have a lot more room to grow and I'm just excited for it because God, God's an amazing God. <laughs> He's just such an amazing God, and I just, I'm excited for, um, to see what my life has in store for me and just ways that I can bring glory to the Father. So. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Isn't that awesome? Yes. Yeah, well, it was late at night, and we got a call, and he came, and we rang the doorbell, I don't remember which, and, you know, it was a great night of just watching TJ make that transition back to the Lord Jesus Christ. And then, you know, when we go over there where he, he, they have their services and they uh, minister, that TJ is so loved. And people have come up, and one lady, she said, one young girl came up to us at the baptism, and she said, you know, I just started coming to this school, and I didn't have any friends. And they were somewhere, and she sat next to TJ, and she said, 
Uh, and TJ said, I wasn't going to talk, but all at once he started talking. And TJ started introducing them to all her friends. And she said, now I've got plenty of Christian friends everywhere now. So God will use you if you'll let him. He will use you and touch you. Then I want the most beautiful woman in the world to me to come up here and stand by my side just a moment. Give me that microphone one more time. Now I know I'm taking longer, and I'm, but I promise you I won't preach but two hours. <laughs> You know I won't do that now. But uh, yesterday we, as I said just earlier, we celebrated 56 years of marriage. And so she was just born when we got married. So, so I married an infant. I married an infant at birth when she was at birth. Now, you know better than that. But anyway, um, you know, um, 56 years of marriage, um, for me to describe her and how she made me much a better person than I was. I was a redneck from Tennessee. <laughs> Trust me. I was a redneck from Tennessee. Never smelt Romana cheese in my life. <laughs> and when it was served, I thought, mm-mm, I can't eat that. Uh, and it really was on ravioli. I didn't even know what ravioli was. I, <clears throat> I, I, all I knew was Chef Boyardee. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> when, I had, when I had the real thing uh, served, you know, she's Italian. People say, well, how can she be Italian and be a Canadian? Well, she was born in Canada, and her mom and daddy was Italian. <laughs> her grandparents, you know, so what do you do? I mean, you know, the, it's very easy for me. But uh, all of you have heard the story. I won't go over it again and again. But that night that I saw her, she was sitting with her cousin, who was a very, very, very beautiful young girl, too. They were girls. Yeah. They weren't women then, you know, because I was still a boy. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, the attraction was there. But most of all, God put it together in 56 years. We've had our, not our problems in our marriage, but, you know, Losing our son, our beautiful daughter Tammy, being hit by the car, uh, the doctor saying that she was not going to live, and and you know we still got one of our family members that's still out there in the world, but we're just believing God, yes, not our yes. son, but one of the grandchildren's out there, and we're just believing God, and it's another one, the first, and walking with God, his beautiful wife and little daughters back in the back, but anyway, God is so good in these 56 years that, you know, she stood by my side, and I'm so grateful. You know, I didn't deserve anybody to love me like she loves me, but I'm, I'm so grateful to have this woman in my life. Well, you know, we gave each other cards, and uh, we don't need gifts because I go out and buy what I want. <laughs> <laughs> And if I bought it, she'd just take it back. <laughs> well, you know, don't you like it? Well, yeah. I'll... <laughs> I do like it, but... Hush, I got the microphone. <laughs> oh. Hush, did you get that? <laughs> well, we gave each other cards, and he gave me some beautiful, beautiful yellow roses. But in the card that I uh, got for him, I wrote that we had a journey of love. And 56 years, it really has been a journey. Because you see, it's not all roses over the 56 years because we've had difficulties. We've had uh, events in our lives that were not planned. and. But because of our love, we were able to continue the journey. And both of us, you know, when, when we weren't maybe so, so lovely to each other, it was the love that kept us together. Because, you know, sometimes, as we know, we don't want to admit it, we don't have a right attitude. But he's loved me anyway, and believe it or not, he's not had a right attitude either sometimes. <laughs> How could you say that? <laughs> but you know, you overlook, and when you look at things, 
it's better to overlook than to be right. I found out, I know he always tells you that I, 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 I'm always right, which most of the time now I am. <laughs> Turn your signal on. <laughs> Turn right. <laughs> Open the garage door. You know, I mean, it's just... It's... You won't let me talk. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> But you know, you overlook anyway because I want to keep peace. And I'd rather love and keep peace than to be right. Amen. Amen. All of us think we're right anyway. All of us in this room think I am right most all the time. But you know what? We're really not. And I would rather love and keep peace than to be right. And so that is... She learned that from me. You see what I have to put up with? <laughs> he won't shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the store story? <laughs> but anyway, I love this man more today than I did the day we got married. And our journey has been an awesome one. And God has been so faithful to us. We have experienced so many things and have been all over the world. And I am just amazed at how much God loves us and his faithfulness and his grace that he has put on us. And I am so thankful today, thankful for my two handsome young grandsons on this front row. And I love them so much. And Chad was our first. And it was like having our own child all over again. And I think all of you know the love that I, well, you took my time. <laughs> I have such a love for him and to see the young man and father that he has become is so awesome because now that he has a child, he wants that child to grow up loving God. Amen. 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 Give her a hand clap of praise. We can still laugh after 56 years and still love each other and, and, and trust me, you know, she's always right. But I did teach her that it, it's better to love than to be right sometimes. You've all heard the, the story. We were in Florida. We got up and we was hugging and kissing. It was a great day. We were looking at the beach outside, you know. And so, man, it was a wonderful day, and I was riding down the road, holding her hand, you know, and, boy, this is a great day. It's going to be an awesome evening. I looked over there and I said, you look at that store over there. She said, I said, let's go in that store. She said, you've been in that store? I said, I have. I said, I don't remember. Yeah, you've been in that store. I said, I haven't been in that store. <laughs> she said, you have been in that store. I said, she been, I've never been in that store. You, Don, it's, it's, you know, she, usually when it's Don, that Canadian part comes up, Don, <laughs> you've been in that store. I said, I have not been in that store. <laughs> I didn't have an attitude. <laughs> she said, Don. I mean, you know, it was getting real loud in the car. I thought, well, I'm just right here. I'm just a, <laughs> two feet away from you, you know. But I guess she thought I was hard of hearing or something. And she said, you've been in that store. And, and I was just about to say, Sharon! But you know what? Instead, I realized she wants to be right. I said, you know what, babe? If you say I've been in that store, I've been in that store. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Now... We laugh about it all the time now. She still thinks I was in that store. <laughs> and I know I wasn't in that store. <laughs> but we did visit it that day, and I, she was telling me, see, don't you remember, don't you remember, don't you? Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, baby, it was really nice. Anyway, we've had so much fun, and this is Resurrection Sunday, and I'm taking off a of preaching time. But God is good, isn't he? Father, we thank you for your goodness, for your love, your mercy for this day. For all the people that's in this room and the, uh, the elsewhere, those that's watching, it's a part of this 
live broadcast, we pray, Spirit of the Lord, that you will anoint every heart, every ear, every mind to receive. Touch the people that's home. Touch them wherever they may be watching. God, just let your anointing flow and heal people where they hurt. Touch them and deliver them. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen. Now Easter and Christmas. Well, first of all, let me just tell you what I'm going to be talking about. I'm going to be talking about Jesus, the giver of life. And I, I love when people talk about Jesus. You know, it breaks my heart when I hear people take the name of the Lord in vain or when they use the name of Jesus in a profane, profane way or using it as profanity. It hurts my heart when I hear them say the bad words or use Jesus' name in a bad way because he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. But Easter and Christmas are my two favorite times as a minister because during those times, the name of Jesus is exalted one way or another. Even though there's many people that don't believe, they have to hear about Jesus being born of a virgin and then about him dying on the cross and being resurrected. So these two holidays or two days in the Christian faith, to me is the greatest that I get to be a part of because Jesus is the Lamb of God. And the birth, the life, and the resurrection of Jesus is the greatest thing that ever happened on this earth. There is nothing that you can compare with the birth, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus because of what the birth and the death and the resurrection did. See, Jesus came to the earth supernaturally. He was born from a woman who was still a virgin. Can you believe? Yeah. See, many people say that's not possible, but he was born of a virgin. And one thing we see from this story, God was so unique in the way he did this. He let him be born through a woman, so his blood was pure blood. His blood was not stained with sin been medically proven that the blood of the child and the blood of the mother does not mix. It's, it's totally separate. And so therefore when Jesus came into the world he didn't have the blood of, of his mother because she was a virgin but his blood came from the conception or the seed of the Holy Spirit. So he came as the Lamb of God with pure blood. He came into this world to communicate the compassion of Jesus, to the compassion and demonstrate the healing power of our Father God. Jesus came, Matthew 14 and 14, and Jesus ministered to the multitudes because of his great compassion. So he came to communicate the compassion and healing power of our Father God. The second part of his mission was to pay the penalty of sin. By suffering humiliation, shame, rejection, pain, betrayal. Betrayal is a terrible thing. Betrayal is a terrible thing. So if you've been betrayed, just remember, Jesus was betrayed before you were. So he understands betrayal. He suffered sorrow, grief, physical. And what a lot of people don't understand, physical, he suffered physical death. But before he suffered physical death, he suffered spiritual death. And that's what people don't understand about the cross. Jesus actually died two deaths on the cross. His spirit went black. It took on the sin of mankind. That's what it was all about. Not just the physical death because many people had died and been raised from the dead. But Jesus was the first to be ever raised from spiritual death to spiritual life. 
And he went through that, that you and I may have eternal life. John 3, 16, 17 says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. But through him might be saved. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. See, when we're saved, it's not just a religious experience. It's supernatural. Did you realize when you're born again, it's not religious things happening, but you're changed from darkness to life. Your spirit becomes alive with God's life and love inside of you. You have God's light to shine on your path, to show you how to live on this earth. And then at the conclusion of your life or the coming of Jesus, whichever one is first, to live with him everlasting. Isn't that an awesome thing to think about today that once we connect with him, we are forever with him as we walk and do what he asks us to do. And if you're not born again or your heart is not right with God today before this service is over, say yes to the Lord. Say yes to the Lord. Can you say amen to that? See, as Jesus neared the end of his journey on this earth as a man, we know the story. He had the Passover dinner with his disciples. And he began to go through the the scenario with them. One of you sitting here will betray me. What What a thought that Jesus is sitting there with these 12 men. And one of them sitting there had already sold him for 30 pieces of silver. But Jesus didn't get mad. Jesus didn't get angry. Jesus didn't do something. Jesus just explained, one of you here is a betrayer. After this happened, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane and I've been privileged to be there many times in that place in Israel. See where Jesus prayed at those big olive trees. And while Jesus was praying, Jesus was not just praying to ask for strength to handle the, the things that was going to happen to him physically and emotionally. But Jesus was praying in agony. I mean, it was such an emotional prayer. Think about this. This was such an emotional prayer that Jesus was praying because he realized in just a few hours he would have to go through the Father separating from him. That was what he was so emotional about. I'm sure the beatings and all of the things he would suffer, he was... He was agonizing over that. But the Bible said that he prayed Mm. so much that great sweat started coming out of his body because of the emotion and the the pressure. Somebody said, oh, Jesus didn't have any pressure. Are you a human being? You said, well, he had God's blood in him. He had God's blood in him, but he had human emotions. Mm -hmm. He had human feelings. He had a human body. So he began to pray and cry so desperately for God to give him the strength. And the Bible said that his sweat was so strong that it was like blood coming out of his body. And he became so weak that the angel had to come and strengthen him. Then we see the betrayal where Jesus was and Judas comes with the soldiers and the betrayal and Jesus goes over and or Judas goes over and betrays Jesus with a kiss. But Jesus didn't get alarmed. He had won the battle in the garden. 
Folks, you can win the battle today and know that Jesus won it for you, but you can win it in your heart and life to know that you can walk this walk of faith. You know, he was betrayed by Judas. They spit on him. They crowned him with uh, a, a crown of thorns on his head that stuck deep down in his body. He was beaten with a Roman flagricum, flag, flagricum. And this, this flagricum was so different than you and I could perceive. At the end of that, they made one with three, with nine and twelve. The Romans did with these flagrams. And they tell us through history that Jesus was, they used the one with nine tails that it had it had it on it had on it uh, nails, sheep bones that were all real sharp, and a few other things on the end of that. So when it, that Roman soldier hit our Savior and it went into his back, it didn't just lash and, and cause blood, but it actually, when they brought it, brought part of the flesh out of his back when they beat him. But Jesus went through all of this as our sacrificial lamb. Jesus shed his blood so there'd never have to be a lamb taken to a sacrifice and our sins covered. No longer are our sins covered. They're remitted and they are removed. We are an heir of God and a joint heir of Jesus Christ. We have the Father God living in our spirit. I can't imagine what it was like I can't imagine what it was like. I can't imagine what it was like when they drove the nails in his hands, when they drove them in his foot. They had the hole dug, and then when they took the cross and they raised it, and they put it in the hole in the jerk. I can't imagine. But when Jesus was on the cross in Luke 23, 34, he said, Father, forgive them. For they don't know what they do. Father, forgive them. For they don't know what they do. And after he had been there, and the Bible said in Mark 15, 34, at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? See, Jesus wasn't dead. But the sins of the world then came into his spirit. And that's what the cross is all about. It's when Jesus died spiritually on that cross. I know there's some theologians and things that would differ from me, but that's their choice if they want to differ from me. I go to the Bible and I know what the cross is about because Jesus said it himself. Why ask thou forsaken me. So when sin come into him, our Father God cannot look upon sin. Then verse 23, or chapter 23, verse 46 in Luke, he said, when Jesus cried out with a loud voice, he said to the Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, then he breathed his life. So Jesus died the first death first, the, the spiritual death first, then he died the physical death. And when this happened, darkness came all through the city and the veil in the temple was rent. Yes. On up until that time, there was a veil and you, the only person allowed behind that veil was the prophet or the priest. But the veil was rent and saying we no longer have to go through a prophet or a priest because Jesus is paying the price for our sins. You know, before I get to the resurrection, let me just, let me just enjoy a moment. No, it's not a moment. It's about five. Let me enjoy about five minutes talking about my Savior and I hope you'll enjoy it too because it's Him. This day is all about Him. This day is about the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. 
You know, uh, I think about this. If, if I were to come and ask you right now, what do you really think about Jesus? What do you really think about Jesus? Or, you know, um, if you were to go back into the Bible and you look in the Bible and some of the people there, you could ask them, what do you really think about Jesus? Well, let me just answer that. The leper would say, he's my divine healer. The blind man would cry out, he is my sight giver. For once I was blind, but now I see. The Paul's man would testify and say, he's my strength and he's my life. These limbs of mine were paralyzed, but when he touched me, light entered my body and made me well. Lazarus would shout, he's the resurrection. For once I was dead, but now I'm alive. The adulteress would say, remember, Remember the adulteress in the Bible when they were throwing stones at her and they were trying to take her life and yeah. Jesus walked over and wrote something on the ground. Wish I knew what he wrote on the ground. I wish they would have told us that. But all at once when he wrote on the ground, he said, you that's without sin, cast the first stone. Nobody cast a stone. But what would the adulteress say? She said, he is my savior and forgiver. Yes. Ooh, he's our savior. He's our forgiver. He has forgiven you. The demon possessed man would step forward and claim Jesus is my great liberator. I was bound. I was in bondage with demons and could not function. But Jesus came and liberated my mind. The woman with the issue of blood would declare, Christ is my divine virtue. For when I touched the helm of his garment, virtue flowed into my body, and I was made completely whole. Jairus would come running, and he would say, he brought my dead daughter back to life. Jesus, the giver of life. Everybody say it. Jesus, the giver of life. Say it again. that's too loud for me well what do you do when you go to the ball game you may say I don't go well somebody nearby does one time or another your television's on you may not watch it but somebody is so I like to get loud when I'm celebrating Jesus you know he was born in a stable Yet heavenly angels pronounced his birth from on high. In a stable. But angels are announcing the king of kings has arrived. Can you say amen? You know, let me just say this. He had no place to lay his head in Samaria. Yet he has promised prepared mansions for you, his loved ones. Even though in Samaria he had no place to lay his head. He took on himself poverty on the cross. Yes. See, some people think he lived in poverty, but Jesus didn't live in poverty. He took on the poverty when he took on our sins on the cross. And he took on the poverty that we might have prosperity. And that prosperity is not just here on the earth. It's not just money, but it's the peace of Jesus. It's the love of God. It's the goodness of God that you can get up. And as my beautiful wife said, you can overlook. Can somebody say amen? amen. He was often weary, yet he offers spiritual rest to all 
all who come to him with heavy laden. Mark 11 and 28 says, Matthew 11 and 28 says, Come to him, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So come to Jesus today. He said, come for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He was often thirsty as a human being, yet he could say, he that believes on me will never thirst again. You know, not a lot of people grieved at his birth, at his death. Not a lot of people grieved at his death. Yet the sun mourned at noonday and the earth shook with anguish. I want to say it again. Not a lot of people mourned at his death. Yet at noon when it went dark, the earth shook with total blackness. Some people see Jesus as merely as a grand subject for a painting, a heroic theme for a poem, and that's good. A beautiful form for a statue, that's good. Or just for a song, and that's good. But to those who've heard his voice, who have felt his power, come on, felt his power, say it again. Say it again. Oh, Barbara, where are you, Barbara? I need you saying. Oh, my goodness. I need Barbara to teach us to say, Thank you, Jesus. I can't say it like Barbara. But to those who have heard his voice, felt his power, received his pardon, Jesus is music. He's light. He's joy. He's hope and salvation. He is a friend that never forsakes. Did you get that? Or did you just let me scream for nothing? I had to scream that one out. Our friends forsake us, but Jesus is a friend that will never forsake us. Oh, a rock that never changes or moves, but it's the same. Oh, I remember E.B. Hill saying, E.B. Hill would say, get on that rock. He said, you may bend and you may sway, you may go back and forth, but that rock will never move. We can't wear him out. We, can't, we can pile all our grief and our trouble on him. He's waiting and ready to listen. He's ready to help. He addresses each one of us with the same love. He doesn't love one any better than the other. He touches all with the same compassion. Who like Jesus can make a drunkard sober? Who like Jesus can make a queen of heaven of the woman of the street? Who like Jesus could absorb the tears of human sorrow in his bowl of love, kiss away the scalding tears of loneliness, and can mend a broken heart? Who like Jesus can unite broken homes and tie the cords of love once again. Show kindness to a homeless orphan. Can welcome a prodigal son back home. And bring peace. Bring peace where there's been nothing but chaos, confusion, and dysfunction. That's who our Jesus is. Oh, the name of Jesus, I think about it. My, doesn't it throb? Doesn't it do something to you when you hear the name of Jesus? His compassion is for all pain. It groans with travail. That name of Jesus reveals unconditional love. It breathes life into a dark or dead spirit. 
We struggle sometimes with metaphors trying to describe Jesus and express his love. Some people would say, is he like an orchestra? No, it's a beautiful sound. But his name brings healing to the broken. The orchestra is beautiful, but it can't heal the broken heart. It can't bring salvation to a lost person. Is he like the sea when lashed by rage in a storm? No, that's too boisterous. Is he like a mountain wreathed with lightning, canopied with snow? No, that's too solitary and remote. Look at him on the cross. Look at him on the cross. Imagine just for a moment, you've seen pictures, you've seen the passion of the Christ, you've seen it, but for a moment with the blood, the, the pain, the agony, the crown of thorns, the sign over his head, them giving him vinegar to drink when he was thirsty. Them parting his garment. They were gambling over his clothes. So just for a moment, the very epitome of divine love hung on the cross. The very epitome of divine love. We say we love, but let's look and see what love really was. Covered with shame. Covered with every shame which man can heap upon criminals. Forsaken and denied, even by his own disciples. Yet no bitterness escaped his lips. Only a prayer of mercy and forgiveness. He came from the bosom of the Father, leaving the glories of heaven to be born of the womb of Mary. He came to serve and give his life for you and me. Can I have two minutes to tell you who Jesus is? He put on humanity that we might put on yes. divinity. Yes. He took poverty at the cross with sin that we could live under his blessing. He was a born in a great place of influence. I don't read of him attending a university anywhere. Are you with me? And I don't read anywhere that he was actually trained to do what he did for the three and a half years that he ministered. But in infancy, he startled the king. In boyhood, he puzzled the doctors. In manhood, he ruled the course of nature and hushed the sea to sleep. He shed his blood for our sins. He gave his back to the smiters. He bore stripes for our sickness. He gave his cheeks to those who plucked out his beard. He was despised. He was rejected, he was mocked, he was smitten, scourged, denied, cursed. All of this was for you and me. He was the bread of life, yet he went hungry for 40 days. He was the teacher of teachers, but the scribes of his day would have nothing to do with him. He was the prince of glory, but it was the common people who heard him gladly. He never married. Yet he has more spiritual sons and daughters than any other man. <laughs> he never committed sin. Yet it was the sinners who wanted to eat dinner with him. Isn't that awesome? Sinners wanted to see him. Even Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus climbed the tree because he was short. I want to see the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. 
It could stop a funeral procession by raising the dead. But no one stopped his funeral march to Calvary. He was not a politician, but government leaders feared him everywhere he went. And when he comes again, the whole world and all the leaders of the world will recognize him as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Yes. Who is Jesus? He's the altogether lovely one. He's the chief cornerstone. He's the sure foundation. He's the door to heaven. He's the great physician. He's the all-knowing teacher. He's the sower of the Lord of the harvest. He's the rock of ages. He's the rose of Sharon. He's the true witness. He's our counselor and our advocate. He's the pearl of great price. He's the unspeakable gift. He's the wisdom of God. He's the bread of life. He's the word of God. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God and all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life and the light was the light of men. So when you're born again, you have the light that lights your pathway. He is the truth incarnate. He's the giver of rest. He's the very son of God, the savior of the world. Our soon coming king and Lord of Lords. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and the morning star, the rose of Sharon, the light of eternity. He's an oasis in the desert, a path in the wilderness, a gale of sweet spices from heaven. He's brighter than the sunlight, louder than the thunder, faster than the lightning, higher than the highest mountain, lower than the lowest valley, wider than the widest ocean, deeper than the biggest sea. He's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end, the first, the last. He's our rock, our sword, our shield. He's the wisdom of Solomon, the strength of Samson, the glory on Moses' face. He's the fourth man in the fiery furnace. He's the love of John, the wholeness of Paul, and the power of Peter, and the devotion of Samuel, and the meekness on Moses' face. He's the humility of Stephen, but the boldness of Elijah, the live coals that touch the lips of Isaiah. He's the obedience of Gideon, the bravery of Joshua, and the stone that was in David's swing. I'm saying a lot of words here today, folks. But all of my words is all about the king of kings that rose from the dead. He's the angel that led Israel. He's the stone in Daniel's mountain, Ezekiel's wheel, in the middle of the wheel. Now, I have to stop. I have plenty more, and I could go through every book of the Bible telling you what Jesus was in the book of the Bible. But for time's sake, I must stop now and tell you. And y'all keep a wide shot on me here for a moment so I can move here a little bit. Just put a wide shot on me. When Jesus died on the cross, when Jesus died on the cross, it was more than physical. Jesus went in to where Satan was. Satan was having himself a party. Can you see it? His orchestra, his band, his singers, him sitting up, him sitting up. I am Lucifer. I have killed the Son of God. I have done it. I have done what I've set out to do. He thought he was greater than I, but I am Lucifer. But over here somewhere, over here somewhere, somebody started walking in. The music 
music was playing. Lucifer was sitting in his big chair. The crowd was applauding. They were dancing. They had their finest garments the demons could wear. But someone was entering to change things. All at once as he started coming in, people, the demons started looking around. What is it? What is it? What is it? What, what's going on? What's, what, what's happening here? What is it? What's going on? Jesus was walking in. All at once, orchestra and band members started stop playing the music, laying their instruments down, their horns down. Another step and another step. And things started getting quiet. People were dancing, started falling in the floor. I mean, Satan himself began to, what's, what's going on in here? The atmosphere is changing. Something's going on here. And all at once, everybody left him. It was quiet. He couldn't say, oh, God. <laughs> he said, oh, myself. <laughs> He said, oh, myself. <laughs> well, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the great I am, the lily of the valley, walked over and stripped the keys of death, hell, and the grave out of the hands of Lucifer. Life came back into his spirit. Life came back into his body. And he arose from the dead and he gave you and me the keys to the kingdom we have the keys whoa somebody say praise God wow when he arose from the dead the angels came and rolled away the stone and all of the guards fell as dead men and when Mary came and she looked into the tomb there was nothing there and the angel said why are you looking here he's no longer in the grave but he is risen he is risen TJ, come up here. Come up here, son. Come up here, son. Just stand up here with your long hair. Put your hands up. Come on, say it again. session for you and me. One more time, TJ. sorrow by continually walking and living in sin and allowing sin to be Lord and Master of our life. When we have a Savior where I only gave you a glimpse of what He went through for you and me. If you don't know him as Lord and Savior, wherever you're watching in the world, you in this room. 
right now make the decision. I love him. I love him. Barbara, if you can get some help and begin to serve communion quickly. I know our time is, or Graciela, whoever's going to serve the communion. I forgot to tell people up front, you that are home to get your whatever and have communion with us at home. I just forgot. We're going to have communion today. And uh, we're going to remember. We're going to remember this morning. We're doing this not as tradition. We're not doing this as tradition. But we're doing this because Jesus did this at the Passover dinner. And then he said in his word, as long as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. So the blood, the, the juice represents the blood and the bread represents the body. So when we take this, we're going to remember yes. that his body was broken and bruised in many different ways, I explained. He was denied, he was rejected, he was betrayed. But he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Somehow, let's eat the bread and drink the juice today and ask God to help if there's any bitterness in your heart. If there's any darkness inside of you, let's believe that light comes to you. If there's any anger that you're carrying in your house, I'm not talking about your physical house at home. I'm talking about Ephesians 4.27. It says, give no place to the devil. And that place, word place coming from the Greek means house. It means home. It means room. So give no room to Satan inside of you. Let Jesus be your Lord. Let Jesus be your Lord. The scripture says, as you eat the bread, he said, to think about. It doesn't say it exactly like this. This is my interpretation. Think about what he went through for you. Don't think about it as the whole world. Think about it that he did it just for you. If you were the only one, he would have done it for you. When you think about the blood, think about how his blood was shed on the cross and he took on sin. And his blood washes all your stains away. Pray this prayer, you and the uh, uh, internet audience. Lord, I come to you now. I give you my heart. I give you my life. Forgive me of my sin. Jesus, I make you Lord and Savior of my life. When I receive this bread, partake of the juice, I'm reminding myself of all you have gone through and suffered for me and that you gave me new life. Thank you, Lord, for saving and redeeming me. Amen. Now the scripture says as we do this, do it in remembrance of me. Father, let healing, let healing as they break the spread with their mouth, their teeth. Let them remember your body was broken and whoever needs healing in their body. Let them just remember this bread is a symbol of the broken body of Jesus. Let healing flow. Let healing flow. Let healing flow. Let emotional healing flow. Let emotional feeling flow. Restore. Restore what needs to be restored. 
restore what needs to be restored. Make life brand new for them. Father, you said in your word as we take the cup, do it in remembrance of me. Thank you, Jesus, for your redemption, for your blood. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Did you get blessed today? For the point of the message today, is for all the attention to be upon the Lamb of God. John recognized him in John 1 and 29 and he said, Behold the Lamb of God which takes away the sins of the world. That word behold means to look upon, to take notice, to get your mind upon the object. So today, today, I pray that somebody will let something that the anointing of the Holy Spirit resonate inside of you that when you go out, you leave any burden. You that are home when the web goes off, when we leave you, release those burdens and give them to Jesus. Let him take them for you today. You don't know what I've been through, Pastor. That's true. But I just told you what Jesus went through for you. Jesus went through it for you. When the doctor told us our daughter wouldn't live through the night, that could have been. That could have been when she was hit by that car. I was in Fort Worth. She was in Tennessee. I had to fly home. Her head was broke open. The doctor said she won't live till sunlight, till daybreak. If she does, it won't be long. She lived. She's alive. Here's her son. Her husband's deployed in a, the fourth deployment right now in the military. See, you can quit, you can give up, or you can come to Jesus. It's your choice. Amen. Come and stand with me.
just shared with you this morning from God's holy word that Jesus did it all for you. Jesus did it all for you. Just magnify. Just pray in the Holy Ghost for a moment. Just pray in the Holy Ghost for a moment. Let Him heal you everywhere. Let Him heal you everywhere you are. Thank you. Thank you. Folks, it's time for the gifts of the Spirit to return to the body of Christ. It's time for the supernatural power and presence of God to be manifested again. Let those gifts operate through you as you go out through your work. You don't have to be a, an apostle or a prophet, or evangelist, pastor, or teacher. Whoever you are, you can do it. We want to give you an opportunity to sow your tithes and your offerings. And as you do something today, remember this is Resurrection Sunday. Remember this is Resurrection Sunday. Sow a resurrection seed. Remember our missions. We feed 100 children a day in India. 100 a day. Three meals a day. Give them academic education. And we give them Bible training. We've been doing this for years. Some have already graduated and gone into college. Many of their parents have come to Christ because of what we do, what you do, I should say. So I pray that God will speak to you today. You that's watching on the internet, you've just seen on the screens there where you can give. I don't ask you if you attend a church to tithe, but if you don't attend a church and I'm your pastor and this is your church, then send a tithe and there's the easy ways you can do that right there. You can do that right now and you that are given your tithes and your offerings. Thank you for being a part. You that consider yourself members in another state or another country, thank you for being a part. Thank you for being a part. God bless you. Get your tithes and your offerings. And then I want to say again, I appreciate my lovely wife. I was going to do this earlier and she got away. <laughs> I could have done it longer, <laughs> but I think I made the point. See, I did, I, at my birthday when she did all that, I wanted to do that, but I thought she had the lipstick that get all over me. She said, my lipstick doesn't smear. Let me see. <laughs> Give Jesus a hand clap of praise. Thank you. Let's stand on our feet, would you? Come on. Hallelujah. Come on, stand and worship the Lord. Hallelujah. I appreciate my lovely wife. I was going to do this earlier, and she got away. <laughs> I could have done it longer, <laughs> but I think I made the point. See, I did, I, at my birthday when she did all that, I wanted to do that, but I thought she had the lipstick that get all over me. She said, my lipstick doesn't smear. Let me see. <laughs> Give Jesus a hand clap of praise. Thank you. Let's stand on our feet, would you? Come on. Hallelujah. Come on, stand and worship the Lord. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. 
high. 